Now let's talk about using slope to figure out the density. Imagine that you're graphing the mass of something in grams and the volume in milliliters. Now you get a whole bunch of points and you plot them and then you make the graph uh, application either on your calculator or your iPad or your, or your computer or whatever it is. You end up getting the slope and the y-intercept. It spits out some sort of number. Now in math class you might be okay with just a number but in science that number whatever you get always has to have units. So I'm just going to make up a number here. Let's imagine that you see a slope of 5 and a y-intercept of 0. Point, actually let's do it scientific notation. Um, 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. So let's pretend you have uh, a slope of 5 and a y-intercept of 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And let's talk about these values and what they mean. Now again, in math class, a number might be good enough, but in science, our slope really should have units. So if you get 5.0, it's 5.0 what? Now you know it's going to be y over x. So look at your units on your y-axis, grams. 5.0 grams, look at your units on your uh, x-axis, milliliters. Now 5.0 is the same as saying 5.0 over 1. So this is your slope, 5.0 grams for every 1 milliliter. So if you go over 1 milliliter, you're expected to go up 5 grams. You go over 2 milliliters, you're expected to go up 10 grams. It's a ratio. It's a conversion factor. We can use this in dimensional analysis problems. This, grams per milliliter, is also known as density. So your slope, in this case, when you plot mass over volume, is also your density. Now let's talk about your y-intercept. Now the y-intercept, it's 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now let's think about negative exponents. Negative exponents means it's a small number. It's between 0 and 1. And if you were to take this out of scientific notation, it's 1.4. Move the decimal point this way. Make it a very small number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are a lot of zeros here. This is an extremely small number. And if we were round, to round this to the tenths of the hundredths place, it would really just be plain old 0, which makes sense because if you have 0 volume, you should have 0 mass. If you got nothing away, you shouldn't weigh anything. So this is, in all intents and purposes here, a zero. Your slope is zero. And that's, again, the point at which it crosses the y-axis um, when the volume is zero. Now, let's imagine, for some reason or other, it crosses the y-axis up here. Let's imagine it crosses the y-axis at 40. Your slope comes out, or I'm sorry, your y-intercept comes out to 40. So it means if you put some units on it, your y-axis is grams. 40 grams when the volume is zero. What on earth could that mean? Well, let's think about it. If you don't put any liquid in a container, but the container weighs 40 grams, wouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't your y-intercept be 40? You've got zero milliliters, but yet the scale still reads 40, probably because your container is on there. And the container itself, with zero milliliters of your substance you're going to measure, weighs 40. And then every trial after that, it's going to be 40 plus the new mass, 40 plus the next mass, 40 plus the next mass, and so forth. Every time you add more volume, your mass is going to go up. But the y-intercept is 40, because that's probably your container.